Hi, my name is Amanda Wolf. I am the curator and director of the museum at the Scottish Rite Valley of Chicago. I've been here for almost four years. And today we're gonna to talk about the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition exhibit that I just did. In the collection, we had a large assortment of artifacts that were from the fair. Most of them were paper artifacts, so booklets and letters and pictures. And then we had a coin and a ticket and a few other minor things. And I felt like it was really important to tell the story because we also, within the building, have two statues that were from the World's Fair, the Fair Fisher and the Psyche in her bath. We also have the Life of Man picture, which is by the dining room. And then we also have the Tiffany Globe that was from the fair. So for this exhibit, what we decided to do was create a feel that you were walking the fair. And we put panels throughout the building that talked about seven major buildings. We also had banners that talk about the Ferris wheel, the Statue of the Republic, and a map of the fair, which gave you the grand the, the idea of the grand size of it. It was 633 acres that was in Jackson Park that you know today. The only remaining building in that space is the what is now the Museum of Science and Industry, which is not, was the Palace of Fine Arts. And then it was transformed into the Field Museum before the Field Museum was built in 1921 and then all of the artifacts that were at that building were moved to the field museum after the uh, building that you was from the fair is the museum of science and industry but it was abandoned i for about 20 years and then a german entrepreneur went to a science museum overseas and decided to propose the idea of turning that vacant building into a science museum. That building had an extra layer of plaster on it to ensure that it, it was to have a fire that it was going to survive because of the $5 million worth of art that was in that building. The only way to ensure that building was to get a extra level of protection from fire. And most of the buildings after the fair were um, destroyed by fire. They were all, there were also buildings during the fair that were destroyed by fire. The one specific was the cold storage building. And they realized after that burned that they had to stop allowing people on the roofs of buildings because they didn't have a safe way to get people down in the case of a fire. And so the Otis elevators that went up to the roof became obsolete in some ways because they weren't allowing 1,100 people on the roof of the administration building anymore because of the fire safety. The sad, unfortunate reality of the World's Fair collection that we have, we don't know, or at least I don't have records of where it came from, when it was donated, who it was donated from. I actually found it in the collection while I was cleaning up the collection room and took the time to accession it and go through each piece. And there were quite a few pieces that the front covers and the back covers had been dislodged from the inside pages. And I spent the time to reunite them. Thankfully, uh, Library of Congress and the internet had images and references I could use to reunite them. Um, one specifically was the Dream City portfolio, which is a 17 series uh, piece that was created to give a feel of the fair. So it had um, pictures and realistic captioning of what it was like to go to the Grand Arch of the Transportation Building or see Marie Antoinette's bedroom recreated or the French furniture or the trusses in the machinery building 
the artwork in the art palace, hundreds of images and descriptions that were talked about and it was they were created in 1893 and they were $12 for the year to subscribe to them. It was an advertisement but also a souvenir to take home.